Hey there folks, this is Josh Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to the farm. Today's gonna be a fun day. We're gonna be working with the John Deere skid loader, the little 250 over here. That's a 1999 John Deere 250 skid loader. It's got around 1200 hours on it. And we're gonna be installing a set of grouser tracks. So we've got them sitting out right here. We're gonna unroll them. We're gonna drive the skid loader up on it and we're gonna bolt them together. We'll show you just how simple and how easy it is to install, I hope. <laughs> and before we do that, we're gonna take the skid Skid loader over on the other side of the farm we're going to kind of put it in some mud and some sticky steep situations and then we'll take it back over there with the tracks on it and show you the improvement in traction that this machine's going to gain from getting a set of grouser tracks all right Woo! i ain't afraid of work i ain't afraid of play i ain't afraid to get the job done and do it my own damn way so first thing we got to do here is we've got to put some air in these tires. The folks I bought my tracks from said the best insurance you can have when having tracks over tires is to keep your tire pressure up to get up close to the maximum pressure. Now the max pressure on this tire is written right down here and it's 65 PSI. We also have one tire facing the right way here and one tire facing the wrong way. I took a closer look and it turns out this wheel has been put on backwards so I've got to undo that wheel, take it off, turn it around and put it back into place. And we're going to pump these tires up. The max pressure is 65. To be safe I'm going to pump them up to 63 PSI. That one's already at 75 so we actually need a little, little bit of air out of that guy. And we'll make sure every tire has the same pressure. There we go. 65. I'm a huge fan of DeWalt tools. I did a review on this guy. This is a little DeWalt pancake compressor. It's been super duper handy to have on the farm, especially when we need portable air and we're not near the shop. So here we go. This one has 30 PSI in it. We're going to hit all four tires. I'm going to jack this thing up. We'll pop this wheel off. Take her off. <laughs> Turn her around. So we've got the grouser tracks unbound right here with our Nipex or Knipex cutters right here. These things are awesome guys. I just want to show you these. These are like a miniature eight inch bolt cutter. I'll post a link down in the video description. This is what we use for cutting our fence wire, 12 gauge fence wire. Works great, absolutely great. So we're gonna pull these out so we can run the skid loader up on top of them. There are two ways you can do this. There's a one person way and a two person way. They recommend with one person that you take a string and tie to it. There's instructions on Grouser's website. Uh, I'll, I'll post a link down there. You might not wanna look at that, but if you're considering getting a set of tracks for your skid loader, this is the bar type track so it's not the rubberized track it's the bar type track I'm gonna try to pull them off on my own here and stretch them out so we can run the skid loader up on top of it once we get these tracks all set up ready to rock and roll we're gonna go over and get in the mud a little bit I hate to get my tires and my skid loader all muddy but I want to show you guys just how much of an improvement this really will be over a standard tire skid steer it's just gonna turn it into a totally different machine I'm super excited We just got to get this guy straight. Each one of these tracks weighs around 450 pounds. The whole pallet weighed 916 pounds. Now that's set up where we can drive right up on here and then we'll fold it up on top and we'll show you how to do the buckle in the middle. So put the tooth bucket on the 250 right here and this is pretty much the muddiest spot on the whole farm right now. We had a snowstorm and a little bit of rain. You can see my tracks through here where I took the uh, Kubota just now and it's snotty. It's just really snotty right here. So we're going to go ahead and get this thing in here. If we get stuck, we'll at least have the tooth bucket to dig our way out. These tires are, like I said, they're in pretty rough shape. So let's get busy. Let's get in the mud.
Well, the 250 is sitting over there running in the woods, and that's about the only place it's any good. Guys, I got stuck. How many times did I get stuck? All I could do was try to get it turned around and push back that way. That's the only way out. So I had to turn it around, and that's where I got all up in here. That thing doesn't do worth a hoot with those tires on it. It sunk up that deep, and then it just dug right in. So you can see it was just bottoming out. And now we're going to go put the tracks on and see what she does. I hope I've got enough daylight to put the tracks on and bring you back today. If I don't, we'll hit it first thing in the morning. So we got our track laid out right here. We got our skid loader here. Scratch head, scratch head. What's the next step? Well, we got to roll up on top of the track, but first we got to drop the bucket because the bucket's going to be in the way. So we'll roll up on the track and we'll lift them up on the top of the track and I'll show you how we connect the system. I got my fingers crossed. Sun is sinking low in the sky here, so we may be finishing this up tonight and zipping back over there in the mud in the morning. I don't like doing that, but I think it's gonna make it easier on me. I don't like getting out from under this skid loader with the lift up in the air like that. <laughs> Not a big fan. So, everything's all clear, and we're gonna lay these tracks up on top. 250 pounds, something like that that I'm pulling toward me. So we got them up on here. This is not the recommended way to do it with one person. That's okay. We're doing it. What we gotta do is connect this guy with this guy. It shouldn't be that bad. It should be very easy. Now, uh, Grouser told me, since my tires are really worn, there might be a little extra sag in here, and that's okay. There's a little adjustment that I can make to tighten these tracks up just a little bit. But you don't want to run them tight. You want to run them with a little bit of sag. We'll take a look at what we have, and we may have to make some adjustments. So you can see there are two holes in each track okay this is one solid track there are two holes they're held together with bolts these bolts you can remove them and put them back there and back there and that will draw it up ever so much so that's the adjustment right there okay and we're gonna probably move this bolt here just a little bit and we'll probably move this bolt just a little bit too and that way when we bolt them together we'll have just the tiniest bit of sag right here now, it's tough to get in right here on the back side, so be aware of that. Again, it's a three quarter inch, so we're gonna roll this out just a little bit so we can get to it. Okay, we're gonna repeat the process here, but this is the link right here that connects the two together. I'm gonna bring this in just a little bit too. A lot easier on the outside than it is on the inside. We're going to do this off of the machine <laughs> on the next track, just so you guys know. Got a ratcheting wrench right here. This might make life a little easier for us. We got to watch these nuts or bolts. We're going to lose some knuckle skin. There we go. Let's get some gloves on this. Oh, come on, baby. Get on there. Am I tightening? If I am, that's going to be pretty stupid. We do it right because we do it twice. Now! Should be easy now. Oh. Unless I tighten it down. Good gracious. Mm -hmm. There we go. The kit comes with a big old ratchet strap here. So we'll put the ratchet strap onto the track and we'll pull the track tight. Now guys, you gotta think, you can't have this too tight because this is chain drive underneath the seat right here. So the chain drive is what moves the rotating wheel assembly here. So if you put it too tight, you're gonna break chains. If you put it too loose, it's gonna fall off. So you really gotta have just the sweet spot here, okay? And it may take us a little while to figure out the sweet spot. It looks a little on the floppy side. All right, we got track number one in place with the proper amount of sag right here. It still may need to be taken up a little bit, but I feel pretty confident the tracks aren't going to come off those tires. 
So again, we got to keep in mind tire pressure. So whenever we get out here to work on our machine, we need to check our tire pressure, make sure we're about 60, 63 PSI. Now we're going to go around to the other side after I unroll this section of track. Uh, the first section took me about 35 minutes. I imagine the second section will take about 20 minutes. now and I can go ahead and take up the slack that I needed to take up before so I'll go ahead and do that and it'll be a whole lot easier to do it while it's on the ground here this is a beast to wrestle So we learned something. So I took the bolts loose up here before I lay the track up there so it's not so hard to get back in and take them apart. So that'll eliminate a few minutes of uh, struggle right there. And I brought in four links on this one. I only brought three links in on the other side so I'm gonna tighten it up one more link and we should be totally good to go. This one should be just like that. I'll be good at this by the time I get done. Snugger up. Oh, oh, oh. That's heavenly right there. There's no lubrication on these tracks, really. I guess when they wear out, they wear out. So we're gonna just snug this up just a hair, and then we're gonna start the machine up, roll forward, and we can easily access the bolts right there, the nuts and bolts. I think our sag's good, and this is why we pulled forward so I could access the bolt both on the outside and not have to fight the inside. Okay, that's the amount of sag we have in here. Let's do a little test run. good <laughs> all right let's head back down and get in the mud hole it's getting dark sun's gone down already but I think we've got enough light we can get in the mud hole <laughs> Didn't even know my drone's got a built-in flashlight. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Man, guys, let me set the drone down and let's talk about this machine. Holy cow, what a difference. That thing is a mud dog and rock star. It got dark on us, you can tell. You can hear the frogs back there. This is a really swampy area, as you can tell. I couldn't even get it stuck. It immediately got stuck with the tires, but those tracks kick butt, man. Holy cow. I did some research. The best OEM tracks that I could find were the Grouser brand tracks, so that's what we bought, and I'm super duper happy. We'll keep you posted on the channel. We're gonna put this thing to work. We got a tree clipper from Precision Manufacturing out in Missouri. We're gonna put that thing to work pretty soon. I thank you a whole lot, guys. Be sure you pound that like button, jump in here, subscribe to the Stony Ridge Farm channel. You just never know what you're gonna get. Thanks a lot. See you next time. Woo! Well, come on down to the Stony Ridge.
Bring your wife, bring your kids, we're living life pure and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be, Stony Ridge.